On this edition of City Focus, we inform citizens how to properly dispose of their hazardous waste. We check in on the 2015 class of the Defy program. Mayor Gale announces the winners of the 2015 Valdosta People's Choice Photo Contest. The Valdosta Fire Department gives us a safety tip, and a great public servant receives a special recognition. These stories and more on this edition of City Focus. Hello, I'm Marcus McConico, the media coordinator for the City of Valdosta, and this is City Focus, your source for information for what's happening in your city. Let's take a look at a few of the key topics that are happening in the city. In an effort to be more environmentally friendly, the City of Valdosta and the Public Works Department is asking citizens to be cautious when disposing of household hazardous waste. Improper hazardous waste disposal can harm the health of people, animals, and plant life. It can also contaminate soil, local water supply, and pollutes the air. Items such as motor oil, pesticides, herbicides, and paint or pool chemicals should not be placed in your rollout or recycle bins. Make sure that you do not uh, put anything in it, any construction uh, items for as uh, car parts, bricks, blocks, uh, hazardous materials. Don't place hazardous waste, paint, motor oil, gasoline, pesticides, and roll out for pickup. These items are accepted at the Care Environmental. Citizens of the City of Aldosta can drop off household hazardous waste with no charge at Care Environmental at 714 Gill Harbin Industrial Boulevard between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Fridays only. The phone number for Care Environmental has recently been changed to 229-469-8072. This summer, kids around the Valdosta community are beginning their year of the Defy program. Drug Education for Youth is a mentoring program for 9 to 12 year olds where youth are paired with adult mentors. Philosophy Police Department is absolutely 100% committed and dedicated to mentoring kids inside the city of Velasta. D5 is a one year camp with two phases. Phase one is our leadership phase where we talk to the kids about what to do if you're being bullied, how to resist negative peer pressure. It also involves teamwork where kids work together to try to solve a common problem. Now all these games and things that we teach kids are things they can go out through their teenage years and even adult years to learn from. Mentors spend time with the youth, teaching them about the consequences of their actions, and the kids are rewarded or punished for their everyday actions. Our phase two is like a rewarded phase, and phase two if the kids remember everything we taught them in phase one and utilize it through school, through home, and in neighborhoods, then we might take them fishing. We may go uh, camping for three days, horse bike riding. It's just our way of showing the kids, you do good, you're gonna get rewarded. Now, these kids in doing things, what we do is they sign a contract giving us permission to go check in their school. So if I go visit one of my students and see that he has been turning his homework, he has been, yes ma'am, no ma'am, thank you, please. And the teacher said, oh, he's an excellent student. And I get those compliments. That kid will get any reward when we go in for that monthly program. Same situation if a child is not using proper manners not even cleaning their rooms at their house. Their parents can call us for that. You're not cleaning your room, I'm calling your mentor. And we get reports that the child is doing bad while the other kids go and enjoy a fun time, that kid would miss it. So he or she has to continue to do good. Research has shown that kids are, who are disciplined and continuously watched for within a year, whether it's through D5 or through a mentoring, other mentoring program, that child would most likely be a successful person. Mentors and kids build lasting relationships through this program and they never forget what Defy taught them. Some of the most rewarding things I've ever experienced being a mentor in Defy is when those kids grow up to be young adults, 
graduate from college and then send me an invitation. Hey, I'm graduating from college. Come and see me. I want you to be a part of this. And I feel like I had a little to do with this child not getting in trouble. I had just a little to do with this child maintaining good grades, being uh, driven to do right. I feel like I'm part of that child's life for the rest of that child's life. If you would like to learn more about the DeFi program, contact Officer Renotis Williams at 229-242-2600. The Varasta Fire Department wants to educate everyone about the dangers of leaving children in a vehicle. According to NoHeatStroke.org, the United States has averaged 37 heat stroke fatalities of children left in cars since 1998. Fire safety educator Sergeant Chris Staples says everyone needs to pay close attention when traveling with a child and even have someone to call and remind you to ensure that children haven't been left in cars. It's too dangerous your minute could turn into more than one, which it normally does. And it's within 15 minutes or less, your car can reach lethal levels for children and pets and even the elderly. Put a reminder in the front seat with you that there's a child back there or put um, your purse, your briefcase, um, something you need when you get to the destination, so you have to look back there to get it out. In child fatali fatalities under 14, with vehicles involved, 61% were from heat-related incidences. Never leave a child alone in a vehicle. Make it a habit to look in every seat every time before you exit the vehicle. Always lock the vehicle and put the keys out of reach of children. If you have any questions, contact the Valdosta Fire Department at 229-333-1835. For nonprofit organizations that are interested in hanging banners over city streets, there is an approval form that has to be completed. There are five locations that are available. Bay Tree at Sherwood, Bay Tree at Marriott, North Patterson Street, Northside Drive, and Oak Street at VSU. All banners are subject to prior approval by the city manager's office. Nonprofits also have the option to place A-frame signs in three different locations throughout the city. For more information about advertising an event with the city, contact the Planning and Zoning Office at 229-259-3563. Huntington! Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? <coughs> Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. But he has the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. Welcome to Understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. For over 50 years, Ruth Council and her husband Ralph have lived in the same neighborhood where a street will soon bear her name. From that home, she has become a vital part of the Valdosta community. Now, we came here in, in 1964. And uh, so uh, my, my personal feeling, the ramp has the same feeling, both of us from Valdosta, was that we ought to stay in our community. And if we're going to make any, any improvements, we need to make it in this community. I used to say to students all the time, be proud of where you live, make it nice and neat and all of that. But now what's going to happen to their little feelings when, when I move out into a, uh, what you would say a better the area that was better. The students come by and say, Miss Cassie, you still living over here? And, you know, and uh, they feel proud that I'm here. Council has accomplished so much in her life. 
from a career in education that began in 1957 and becoming one of the first women appointed as principal of an integrated high school to becoming the first African American and the second female to serve as a Valdosta City Council member. First of all, I'm blessed to have people who uh, say, yes, you deserve this. I want to see you uh, have this kind of uh, honor. And then I'm very proud of the fact that the city okayed uh, the, that request. And uh, hopefully uh, my great-great-grandchildren will get an opportunity to see that. And, uh, the, and many of the students that I taught. So I just, I feel very honored. Council is very grateful for all the help and support she has received over the years. You know, I don't know how these things have happened to me, but I do know who caused them to happen. And I say, uh, it was my mother and my grandmother. It was my uh, family and my church family. It was my uh, community and my friends, my college and my university, co-workers. In fact, all of these people gave me news that I could use. That's what I say, because they were, they were encouraging, inspirational people, and uh, they believed that I could do what I set out to do, and they helped me to do it. I'll still be eternally grateful to many of them. Crowder Street, which runs between Bethune Street and Bunch Drive, will be named Ruth K. Council Drive in a ceremony on August 1st at 10 a.m. Do you know it was named for Ralph Bunch, an outstanding uh, black person, Ralph Bunch, and Bethune was named for Mary McLeod Bethune, an outstanding black woman. And my street will connect those two. These are great people who made great contributions uh, during the time when it was difficult to, to do that. And uh, to, to be named right in between them, connecting those two, is an honor to me. At 81, I can look back and say, you know, thank God for all that I have accomplished. Ruth Council is a great example of someone who loves her community and is dedicated to serving the city of Valdosta. Her years as an educator and civil servant proved that one person can make a difference in his or her local community and create a better place to live. On August 1st, Crowder Street officially becomes Ruth Council Drive. Because of the timing in the airing of this show, we will share that event footage with you on our next episode. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, don't have, have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. We need a claim number? When I started taking care of mom, I didn't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. But above all, I'm still her daughter. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. We're here to help. Keat Lounge Valdosta Beautiful, or KLVB, held its 16th annual awards luncheon. The event is an opportunity for the organization to thank those who have aided them throughout the year. Greg Brown from VSU was presented Media Person of the Year for his media classes covering KLVB events. The Helping Hands Award was presented to Angela Bray, Dominic Giesling, and the Joyner family for all of their volunteer work throughout the year. Sigma Nu Fraternity was given the Student Organization of the Year. The Langdale Company received the Adopt a Road Participation of the Year, and the Community Partner of the Year was given to the Valdosta Junior Women's Club. Bill Slaughter was given the Chairman's Award. KVLB has three important dates during the fall it wants everyone to remember. October 3rd, Rivers Alive Cleanup, October 24th, Make a Difference Day cleanup event, and November 14th, the Fall Electronics Recycling event. If you would like to volunteer, 
contact Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful at 229-671-3698. On August 21st, Valdosta Main Street invites everyone to its Fall Art Walk. This is the third of four art walks this year. Participants can purchase a wristband for $20 with all the proceeds going to the Public Art Advisory Committee. Wine and beer tastings will be available at all participating Art Walk locations. Participants will also be given a passport to art, which can be stamped at each Art Walk locations for a chance to win a gift. I have nine different stores participating and they're all going to be showcasing their original artwork. We will also have the wine portion of the art walk again and everyone will have a bottle of wine different kinds and so for $20 wristband you can participate in the wine portion of the art walk. Yeah. For more information contact Main Street at 229-259-3577. The seventh annual Valdosta People's Choice Photo Contest winners were announced at the Annette Howell Turner Center for the Arts. Marvin T. Smith won the Best in Show Award for his photo, One of 100, which features a baby red-shouldered hawk in Drexel Park. Smith received an engraved matted frame for his entry, $100, and two season tickets to the 2015-2016 Presenter Series. Other first place winners include Susan Davis for Kitty's Camellia, Juanita Burks for Sweet Flowing Water, Carolyn McMillan for Day Is Done, Leo Salo for Purple Passion, and Joshua C. Lynch in the Spirit of Title Town USA category. In August, the winning photos will be going on a traveling display in various locations in the city and may also be viewed at the city's website at www.valdostacity.com. The City of Valdosta is asking citizens for their input for a new website. The City's Public Information Office, along with the Website Redesign Committee, will decide on a site that puts the user first. The City wants citizens' feedback on ways to improve how information is assessed and displayed. Our goal is to provide a new website that puts the user first. We want to know what information citizens want to be able to find easily and quickly on our website. And so this citizen survey that is available on ValdostaCity.com um, provides citizens a chance to give us their feedback. Let us know what you like about the current website, what we'd like to see changed on the new website. And all this information will be considered when we design the new website that should be available to citizens um, beginning in January 2016. The survey can be found on the home page of the website and citizens have until August 21st to voice their opinion. Saving lives is an important part of being a fire policeman. The Guns and Hoses Blood Drive is just another way for each department to save lives and serve their community. The local Red Cross spent the day at City Hall Annex as visitors in and out of uniform gave part of themselves to help another. Last year the police department won the competition. This year the fire department squeezed out the victory. But in the end, the community wins. Now let's take a look at what's taking place in the city in the coming weeks. August 3rd through 14th, the winning photos in the 7th annual Valdosta's People's Choice Photo Contest are on traveling display. The collection will be at South Georgia Regional Library from August 3rd through the 14th. August 6th, Valdosta City Council meeting at 530 in Valdosta City Hall. August 8th, 100 Black Men Barbecue. Takes the finest barbecue in the South at this annual event, which takes place on the sidewalks around historic county courthouse in beautiful downtown Valdosta. August 11th, the city of Valdosta will begin phase three of its smoke testing program. Citizens may access the city's websites for a map of the smoke testing sites and other pertinent information. August 20th, Valdosta City Council meeting at 5.30 in Valdosta City Hall. August 21st, Art Walk from 5 to 8 throughout downtown Valdosta. This quarterly event combines the love of art and historic downtown Valdosta and features a wine and beer tasting experience and beautiful art displayed at all participating Art Walk locations. Call Main Street for more information. Events are posted on the city's website calendar. To help you stay informed of what's going on in the city, 
Sign up for the weekly e-news blast at ValdostaCity.com slash public information or call Public Information Officer Samantha Matthews at 229-259-3548. The City of Valdosta welcomes city and county school-aged children as they return to the classroom on August 6th. The city also welcomes back over 11,000 Valdosta State students as they return to campus on August 17th. Citizens are urged to drive with caution, particularly in school zones and in neighborhoods throughout the city. Also, motorists should allow themselves additional time to get to their destinations due to the increased traffic on city streets. This concludes another edition of City Focus. Be sure to visit our website at valdostacity.com forward slash Metro 17. Like us on Facebook, Valdosta City Without Limits. Follow us on Twitter at City of Valdosta and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Metro 17 Valdosta, to see past shows and stories. Thanks for watching and we'll see you here next time on City Focus.